Dear students, it is the third video for week six, Pakistan studies. And we are learning the era of development, the reign of General Ayub Khan. Dear students, in the video second, we came to know that Ayub Khan boosted the national economy by making revolutionary steps in the industry with the help of new dams, new factories, mills, vocational institutes. He revived also his economic policies and incentives attracted the uh, businessmen investors from abroad and within the country. The students, in this video, we'll cover some of the contributions of Ayub Khan in social, health, and education sector. We must remember that at the time of Ayub Khan, a new class of people came. The people who were suppressed under the British or the Hindu, Hindu lords and system that changed and people diverted to the education and other reforms. One by one we learn making primary education free up to eighth class, compulsory for everyone. I mean, Ayub Khan made it compulsory that every person, boy and girl in Pakistan should be should learn till eighth class, and the education was made free. And you know that this step is wonderful because most of the people you find around their parents and their grandfathers, and this time they were the student at that time. Set up setting up schools, colleges technical and vocational institutes in both wings of Pakistan helped to increase the literacy rate. In the first video, in the second video, I also uh, pointed out that Ayub Khan took a very keen interest in the human development and he set up schools, colleges, technical institutions, uh, medical institutions, and this is how the literary rate of Pakistan developed. Secondly, Pakistan produced very technical human resource to the Gulf, to the European countries and the Far East. Well, vigorous family planning programs were financed by Americans. Okay. And there were the media of the time was used like radio, cinemas, newspapers, posters leaflets and also different kind of techniques were used to deploy the control of the uh, people population and this was highly criticized by the by the religious people and they thought it against they thought it as a conspiracy to control the muslim population. Okay. Another mega project was prohibition, prohibition of polygamy. I mean, people cannot make many marriage because people would make the marriage and the marriage were not registered. Later on, the children, when they, I mean, when they had children, there was no person looking after them and then the disputes of the property they were uh, the very common ones, okay? And for your interest, the registration of the Nikah, I mean the Nikah farm and registration, they started at the time of Ayub Khan, making the registration of marriage by the government. And it was decided that whosoever will marry in the state of Pakistan, this marriage will be, uh, registered by the government and at the union council level, the secretary union council, they provide different things. I mean, they 
register the marriage mein nikah nama they also enter the dates of births of the children plus they also enter the dates of deaths and the issue the birth certificates and the modern form is nardra because now the population is in huge number clear therefore they involved the union council because union council people they were quite familiar with the people clear therefore it was easier for them to uh, do it moreover equal rights of inheritance were given to those grandchildren whose father mothers were not alive I mean uh, against the sharia this law was constituted that those grandchildren whose father were died or passed away in the lifetime of their grandfathers they will be given inheritance otherwise the uncles they mean the brothers of the father would take the maximum property and it was decided in that law that at least there should be something left with for these orphans so that they may live a little better life next health reformers several centers for the training of the doctors and nurses were also opened I mean the health system of pakistan was also established okay in when pakistan came into being there were few places where the uh, medicine training was available number one king edward medical college maybe one uh, in karachi and other areas whereas the people were uh, relying on the traditional medicine on hakims and vedas and others okay and the local bone centers the modern medical was also established by this government for the trainings of the doctors and nurses okay uh, the experts were hired from the foreign and they came and trained the people okay and this is how pakistan made the deficiency of the medical staff and a time came when the pakistani doctors were considered to be better in the region clear in gulf and other countries okay uh pakistan television was established in 1964 i think pakistan television established and pakistan television became a very powerful tool to educate the people to create awareness to uh share the public policy and this was really and it produces wonderful programs a time was when pakistan television produced the best dramas and there were several other programs which are in theater developed at that time theater and old art which vanished with the passage of time but revival of the theater art and culture in schools colleges and universities art and culture art competition speech competitions sports competitions they were uh, very famous okay at the local level kabaddi local games kabaddi football hockey okay gymnastic they were one of the uh, key games in which the people of pakistan were very uh, they showed heroic uh, expressions or they showed very they won uh, international recognition and fame the students in short with all the flaws and deficiencies maybe the era of ayub khan is an excellent era in the overall development and human development of pakistan and it is the part of the history well it is now necessary to express that why the downfall of ayub khan happened the major reason of the downfall of general ayub khan was the accumulation or holding of wealth and resources with few families secondly ayub khan tried to hold all the powers in his own hands and he didn't delegated the powers okay 
the people in the different provinces like Bengal and others, they felt suffocated. They want freedom. They want to apply their own power, whereas the Federation was keeping a tight hand on these people. Fine. And the war of 1965, although Pakistan survived and defended the country, but it exerted extraordinary economical pressure on Ayub Khan because the price was very high. Commodities become very, uh, commodities become rare for the people. And uh, this is how the people started raising slogans against this person. And finally, he decided to leave and handed over the power to General Yahya Khan and retired. Students, I hope you have learned it. Thank you very much.